In this video, we'll break down the single game Super Bowl 56 slate with a cash lineup and two alternative GBP lineups. And it's all coming up next. Hello, everyone. I'm Eric Lee. And I'm Michael Wiley, and we're the Fantasy Football Consultants. Eric, this has been such a fun playoffs. Uh, so excited for what we have up. Uh, in addition to our FanDuel show today, I think we're going to do a DraftKings show, and we're going to do a Super Bowl special prop bet show and have a special guest for that. What do you think? No, that's going to be fun. A great way to wrap up our, our, our season this week with three shows. We also want to alert you to an older show we did. If you've missed it, you, and you, you can't play Showdown Slates without checking it out. I'll put the link right above. It talks about all the key strategies in order to put a winning cash and GPP Showdown Slate for both DraftKings and FanDuel. All right, let's get into the studio and talk about this Super Bowl 56 Spandle slate. All right, Michael, we are on the single game slate on Fandle. There are just five players led by what they call an MVP that gives one and a half points, uh, whatever their value is. You get to multiply it by one and a half. So it's important that we get that one right. So who are we going to start with, Michael? You know what? The best way to start any lineup this year is with the guy who's right at the top. Cooper Cup. Um, he's going to cost us 16000 of our $60,000, but he's well worth it. And he is, Michael, he should be the league's MVP, even though no one's going to give it to him. <laughs> They're going to give it to a quarterback, but he's our MVP for this lineup. In all seriousness, the one key point I'm going to say a major difference between uh, FanDuel's MVP versus DraftKings um, captain spot is DraftKings makes you pay one and a half the uh, cost. This doesn't. So I don't mind paying up at the MVP spot. This guy, Cooper Cup, has such an incredibly high floor. It's really hard that he is going to uh, uh, steer us wrong. And by the way, he also has a high ceiling, Michael. Yeah, no, no question about it. Look what he's done the last several weeks. I know it's really tempting to go with the quarterback in your captain spot because they seem to have, on average, the highest floor. But uh, this could be, you know, there could be some defense involved in this game. And even though it's a half PPR uh, situation with Fandle, I, I just feel like Cooper Cup, I agree with you. He just has such a high floor. You got to go with him. Yeah, and, you know, we, we have a situation where the Cincinnati Bengals just do such a poor job uh, against the pass. Cooper Cup, even when in tight situations, when you know the ball's going to him, look what happened in the last couple of games when the, you know, when the games were on the line. He's just where Matt Stafford is most comfortable. There is nothing that this guy can't do technically as a wide receiver. You know, he can go deep and get hit, give with a deep pass. They can throw to him almost behind the line of scrimmage, set up blockers for him and have him run for first downs. I mean, the, the, the thought of him not being in a game plan is impossible barring an injury. So, yeah. And, and, and just what to know about him, you know, and not to mention that he's a great blocker, but he's the best route running receiver in the league and a good route running receiver is a reliably open target, both against man and against zone. And both Michael and I are high on the Rams in this game. We think that they're going to win. And if, if Cup is going to be a big part of that if they do win. All right. So um, let's, Michael. Okay. So we, we just, we got our MVP in place. Who are we going to support our MVP with the rest of our $44,000 salary? Well, I already mentioned it a little bit as a teaser. You know, it's tempting to go with the quarterback for your MVP because of the, in, in your master class talks all about this, but because of their high floor, uh, you know, it's his counterpart. It's Matt Stafford. Um, yeah. He not only does he, is he going up against a, uh, a defense that is vulnerable against the pass he has Cooper Cup, and if Cooper Cup does well, Matt Stafford should do well. And he does have other weapons. He doesn't hit the running backs too much out of the backfield, um, but he also has OBJ, uh, and Van Jefferson is back. 
Um, Higley, Higley, I think, is well. maybe still going to be hurt. And so that's a bit of a challenge. Yeah. But I, I think if you're going with Cup, then you're saying of the quarterback, Stafford has, uh, I think, uh, a little bit of a higher floor than Burrow. Yeah, and I think that you you have a situation here where you might say, hey, guys, this is not GPP. You're kind of going all in on the uh, Matthew Stafford to cup connection. Well, wh what other connection could you possibly want to go all in? You got two guys that have, a, that have had a connection all year long against a Cincinnati Bengal defense that is dead last against quarterbacks, dead last against wide receivers, and just poor against the pass overall. So uh, let's let's get Stafford in there. I I, I wholeheartedly agree. I kind of take offense, Michael, that you just said he has a higher floor than Joe Burrow because guess who the next guy I am going to put in here? Uh, salary be darn, I am going to put in Joe Burrow and. What this does in a cash game is it provides such an incredible floor to get both uh, quarterbacks just in general, but specifically in this game, because both the Rams and the Bengals do a better job against the run than the pass. With and these head to head slates, you have an opportunity to put two quarterbacks in. So why wouldn't you with the floors that quarterbacks typically have, including these quarterbacks who all season long, have put up lots of fantasy points. And the other thing I like about Burrow, which is actually more than Stafford, I think from a game script perspective, as this game's on, we think that the Rams are going to win. So does the lines makers. So I think that they're going to be forced into passing situations. And because of the Rams have a such a strong uh, defensive line, that I think we're going to see Joe Burrow be scrambling for his life. And I think you're going to see more maybe of a rushing that he said against Kansas city, uh, where he gives you a little something on the ground to supplement his passing. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't think it'll be planned runs, but if they're going to drop back and throw the ball a lot and they get pressure, he is okay. He's a young guy. He will take off for that first down if necessary. That's right. And the Rams do play a fair amount of man-to-man -man defense, which is when the run for the quarterback can be more successful. And here we are in the Super Bowl where, you know, the, the, the possibility of injury takes a little bit of a backdoor versus the regular season when some coaches say, hey, you will absolutely not run. So there's a good chance, Michael, to, if, if we can get some production out of uh, Stafford and, and, and Cup, especially Cup, that we may finish in the top half in cash games just with those three guys alone but who are we going to uh, round all, out our lineup granted we only have thirteen thousand. yeah so we have no money left and so that <laughs> means we can't even consider anyone you know towards the middle of the pack we've got to go towards the bottom and i want to take advantage of the fact that van jefferson is back and higby is likely to be out and so he's only seven thousand dollars if we look at what he's done the last uh, several weeks he did start to get a little more involved before he got banged I think he was questionable this lack last week so he was a little bit banged up um, he, he you know presents another option for the Rams and we just can't afford OBJ right we we we, we can't afford uh, Akers or Michelle so what are we going to do well they don't have right now it's not for sure what their tight end situation is going to be it's probably not going to be Higby um, and even though their tight end did do decent, uh, you know, in replace of Higby, I like Van Jefferson a little bit better. Yeah. And I like that his big, he has big play produ uh, production. Let's be honest. He's not going to get targeted a ton, but he can just take one target and pay off on this, uh, salary if he, if, if he hits a deep one. So, uh, of our options, I do like, uh, Jefferson. For 6,500, well, um, I am hoping, Michael, uh, CJ Usama, I'm not, <laughs> was hurt last week, and they do not think he'll be back. So I'm hoping that uh, with Usama out, what we have seen from Drew is just a sample of what he will give us in the Super Bowl, a small sample. <laughs> so, uh, so in all seriousness, to analyze what sample can give us, I actually want to go to CJ Usama. 
and you can see how much the Bengals have been targeting their tight end. And again, I'm not expecting Usama's stats for just $6,500. In fact, if Usama is 100% healthy, then you probably want to juggle this lineup and see if you can get him in. And you're going to probably have to go off Van Jefferson or one of our, uh, one of our QBs. But as long as Usama is out, really happy to, to get sample here. He's, uh, he's a bargain for 6,500 to be the Bengals starting tight end. Yeah. And so you got to pay real close attention to Usama. He, he, if he plays, he still may play uh, under question. And so, you know, I think it's really tough to go to Usama unless we hear something different than a guy who was just in a brace uh, halfway through the game uh, or two plays into the game this last week. All right. So this is our cash lineup. We're going to now discuss our GPP lineups. So you prepared one and I prepared one and we'll let the audience decide which one they like more. All right, Michael, this is my GPP lineup. And my MVP won't come as very much a surprise based on some of the things I've said uh, elsewhere. It's Cooper Cup. Um, I'm not as high on Cooper Cup in DraftKings where it comes at one and a half his salary, but his salary is the same whether he, I put him in my lineup elsewhere or as an MVP. So I want him in the MVP spot because not only do I think he has a great floor, I think he has a great ceiling. Um, as soon as you put a wide receiver in your MVP spot for FanDuel, you must put his own quarterback because you need that correlation. So I've got Matthew Stafford. So every time Cup catches those passes from Stafford, I'm getting double points. I really like that. And to further the correlation, I'm going to throw Odo Beckham Jr. in there. So by having Stafford uh, and Beckham Jr., uh, this lineup will benefit heavily from, uh, from that connection as well. So remember, when you do a GPP lineup, you need to tell a story. And the story I'm saying is the Rams are going to put up some points in the passing game, which is going to force the Bengals to have to throw the ball. So uh, definitely going to put in T. Higgins. Uh, Michael, we didn't talk about T. Higgins in our cash lineup, but I just want to briefly say that, you know, he is such an important cog in this particular wheel, especially against the Rams. Why? Because the Rams have a strong passing uh, pass rush. So Burrow is not going to have a lot of time back in the pocket to survey the field, to throw it deep to, to chase. So he's going to have to rely on some of the shorter routes that's T Higgins. So I think he can total up uh, some yardage as well as receptions and hopefully get in the end zone. Now, the last spot is Usama. Now that only assumes he is perfectly healthy. Now, what do I, let me critique this lineup. I love it assuming Usama is healthy. However, it is very chalky. And if I go with this exact lineup, I will guarantee you others will have the exact lineup. So assuming Usama is out, I think the easy change to this lineup is to get his replacement and Drew Sample. I don't think this lineup, Michael, is chalky anymore. I left $1,000 on the table. So I think this will be a lineup that won't be as, as used. So if it does go off, I shouldn't have to share it with a million other people. What are your thoughts about this GPP lineup I put together? Yeah, so I mean, I, I I think that this is the most likely to hit lineup because uh, of the 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 game script that I which I see, which is the Rams using the pass to get ahead early, um, and using the pass to stay ahead, uh, and I uh, you know I feel better about the the Rams against the Bengals defense than I do vice versa. Um, you know, you and I are both high on T Higgins as a, you know, the, basically the replacement for Chase as he gets uh, dwarfed by Jalen Ramsey or double teamed, um, which may not necessarily be what the Rams do. They don't do that as much as other teams, but, but, you know, if they take the game script of what others have done, that's what they'll do, which will make Higgins a high likelihood. I agree with you. I think if, if Uzuma's out, this, this becomes a little more appealing in GPP because I don't see a lot of folks going with sample. 
Yeah, and um, if Usama plays and 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 you feel he's comfortable, I I don't like how chalky the lineup is. One thought I had, I want your opinion because we really haven't talked about Odo Beckham Jr. yet, is same lineup, but put Odell Beckham Jr. in the MVP spot. I don't, I wouldn't change this lineup because I I, I think we got rid of the chalkiness factor. But if Usama plays and you put Usama in the lineup. I think putting Beckham Jr. in the MVP will differentiate the lineup because I don't think many people will do that. And I think you could even do the same with Higgins, right? You could flop Higgins as well, uh, you know, kind of with that idea that they'll be playing from behind and we'll need Higgins. Well, so I like your lineup, but I right. think I like my lineup for risk reward a okay. little bit better. All right. So uh, we'll pull yours up right now. All right, so you've pulled it up here and you can see that I had to sacrifice Cup to put this together. Uh, and while I do think Cup has the most upside, we're going for uh, a little bit of variability here for what you just said. We wanna make sure that we give ourselves a fighting chance to be unique. So uh, I'm basically putting all the money on Joe Mixon being involved in the game, in the passing game, obviously, because I'm still feeling like the game script uh, does involve the Bengals coming from behind, but that doesn't mean they may they they won't be using the run game early in the game, and using Mixon a lot out of the backfield. We've already talked about the pressure that the Rams are going to put on Burrow, uh, which we've seen the last couple of weeks, and him using I think Joe Mixon out of the backfield will be key to them staying around in this game. Now I'm putting all my money on the Bengals here. And it's because of the game script. I'm saying they're going to be coming from behind, but that doesn't mean that they're not going to put points on the board or put yards out there. So who better than Chase and Higgins with Burrow as their, you know, as their captain uh, to, to get them plenty of yards. And I'm going with Chase here because I do think the Rams are, uh, are going to be a little bit different on how they approach um, the Bengals than others have been. And which means they'll be, yes, I think you're going to see Jalen Ramsey on Chase, but Jalen Ramsey does take some chances. Chase is a super athlete, and we've seen at times Jalen Ramsey give up yards to super athletes. So that's kind of what I'm banking on here. Um, you know, we've already talked about Akers and the upside he will have, especially if that game script keeps. Uh, uh, I think a lot of people are going to frown upon Chase for $12,000, given how he's been treated the last couple of weeks. But guess what? He's been treated that way the last couple of weeks, and the Bengals have still won. So I'm not thinking that necessarily that's the game script that the Rams are going to think is the best to double team Chase. So, Michael, you, you put a good lineup together. I do have a couple of things that I personally would change. Um, in GPP, if you're expecting Chase to do really well, which he needs to if you have him in the lineup, and Higgins to do really well, and you think that they're going to be behind, what I would propose is just a flop of Burrow and Mixon. Still have both guys in your lineup. I'm not taking them out. But to put Burrow in your MVP slot because – uh, he's got to have a big game for all these other guys to, to have a big game. Um, but I like that. I mean, you may have, a, you know, with you saying LA hopefully gets ahead in this game on the ground and relies on acres and uh, Cincinnati tries to total up the points in the passing game, catching up. All right, everybody, until we see you later this week with our prop show and our DraftKings show, take care, everybody. Stay safe.